All righty, guys. Stay daddy here. And just want to start, as always, by saying thank you for taking interest in my channel. I hope the content I provide is useful for you. If it is, I'd really appreciate it. You guys hit that like and subscribe button so I continue to grow and provide you more quality content. Also, if you really enjoy the content, you might even consider buying me a coffee. And the instructions and link for that will be in the video description. Now I got that fun stuff out of the way. Let's get down to business. And today we will be talking about setting up a home lab. I've seen a couple of videos uh, on this um, in the last couple of weeks, and I've actually just I've been working on my own project to do this. So I figured I would make my own video series on the way that I have done things. Um, you know, my target originally was actually to build my own, um, you know, build my own uh, system or my own server. Um, but I realized that with you know the last couple of years in inflation, the way that it's been, um, it's actually really not as cost effective as I thought to buy uh, a lot of the individual pieces. I mean, you still can, you can probably make it fairly cheap, but the way that I found or the better way that I found is to buy refurbished data center servers. Uh, so that's kind of the route I'm going to go. And uh, so we'll see, can we uh, you know, make a data center grade home lab set up for less than $1,000? And I think we can. So let's get into how this actually works. So I'll just show you guys. OK, so here's a breakdown of everything I bought uh, so far for this project. Um, so first of all, I bought a Dell PowerEdge R720 server. Um, it's got 20 cores. Um, it says 128 gigabytes of RAM uh, and comes with uh, 4 terabytes of uh, SAS hard drives. But actually, I think it, come, it came with more. I think it just gave me an extra 4 terabyte SAS because it, anyway, I, I looked at it when it came in and it had uh, what looked like four of them already and then one extra, I guess, came with the order. So a total of uh, like 20 terabytes of, of storage. But we'll double check that when we actually start building it. Um, the next thing I bought was uh, some rails to actually put it in the rack. Um, now, I just want to say before we get any further, a lot of the stuff is optional. Um, it just so happened this is the way I chose to do things. There's a lot of other ways that you could do it, um, but this is just kind of what made sense for me. Um, I also bought uh, just another uh, SAS hard drive, a four terabyte. I thought it was only going to come with one, so I bought an extra um, so I could uh, have at least eight terabytes uh, of storage. Um, I also bought a surge protector that actually will sit on the rack or uh, is rack mountable. Um, there's some other more expensive ones out there, but this one seemed to fit the bill for uh, less than some of the other ones that I saw. Um, I bought a, a switch, just a small switch. I don't have a whole lot of things I'm going to be plugged into it right now, so this will be fine for me. Um, but you know, if you have multiple servers that you're trying to you know put in, you obviously would need a, a bigger switch. Um, uh, I also bought. Uh, a open frame server rack, which I'll, I'll show all this in just a minute. Um, but I bought a 12 unit, uh, 19 inch, so that it will actually fit under my desk. Um, so this is really, uh, for me, a, a convenience thing. Um, and I also bought a wireless access point. I picked this one after doing a lot of research because I wanted one that would act as a, um, a bridge wireless bridge because my router is actually on the second floor of my house. So I need a way to uh, allow my server to access the internet without having to run a ethernet cable all the way from here, all the way to the second floor where the router is. So I thought this would be a nice way to do that. So we're going to see you know, how, how that works. And on paper, it should work. <laughs> we'll see as we start uh, building everything. And then I also bought just um, like four ethernet cables, 10 foot. Um, that should be sufficient for what I really need right now. Um, but again, all this will depend on what your configuration is going to look like and um, you know how many things you're actually trying to uh, put in this lab setup. So, um, and as you can see, the, sir, or the total is right under $1,000. But really, uh, you could have cut the expense down quite a bit on a lot of the stuff. Like a lot of people probably won't have the need for 
this wireless access point because they, the router will be in the same room. Um, or, you know, you could have put the, I could have put the server on the second floor right next to the router. Um, so there's a lot of different ways you could do it, but for me, this just makes the most sense. Um, you also don't have to buy the rack, which is pretty expensive. You can just use, um, you know, open metal racks from uh, like Home Depot or uh, Lowe's or Sam's or wherever else you can buy them. Those are way cheaper. Those will hold the server fine. Um, you know, I just I just wanted a nice sturdy uh, rack, and I was willing to pay $192 to get it. Um, but you don't have to go that option. There's also they make um, basically mounts that will hold the server sideways, so you can sit it on your desk uh, like little feet. Um, and those you can buy, I think, for like 50 bucks. So lots of other options than doing this, actually having a rack. Um, so you also, if you already have a surge protector, you can use one of those. Um, and it's probably the biggest cost savings is if you will watch and look for deals. The website that I use is called uh, SaveMyServer.com. I actually really liked it. Uh, I'll, I'll leave a link in the um, video description. I, I would highly recommend them. Um, but uh, if you look, they they have a lot of deals. They're they're having deals on uh, different hardware almost all the time. So if you are patient, you can find um, what you're looking for for a, a lot cheaper. Um, I just wasn't willing to wait, so I paid you know 500. I probably could have got it for 300 or 200, and um, you know drove the cost of this even further down. But uh, but yeah, so that's that's what we're looking at here so far, at least for my build. Um, and one more note on Save My Server, if you are interested in a particular uh, configuration or a particular uh, like set, uh, setup and you want something different than what's, what's shown, you can always call them or send them an email and they will be happy to um, you know, give you a custom build with whatever it is that you need. So yeah, okay, that should pretty much cover the cost breakdown. Um, I just want to show kind of what my configuration setup is going to look like here. Um, so this is my upstairs, so where my router is, or my main router in the house. Um, and then downstairs is where I am. I actually, I live, um, currently I have renters upstairs, so I don't really want to have any of my equipment up on the second floor. So I want to keep it um, basically downstairs in my room. Um, so there go, there's an issue. I don't want to run a Ethernet cable all the way upstairs. So hence this wireless access point is a bridge. Um, and I'm sure there's probably other easier ways to do it, but this seemed like the most robust solution that I could find or I could think of. So I'm gonna try it, see how it goes. For 75 bucks, uh, I figured I'd give it a go. Um, so the wireless access point is gonna be tied to the switch, which is gonna be my server rack or server in the rack is gonna be uh, tied into the switch. And then my switch is gonna be tied directly into my uh, desktop hub. Right now I have like one, um, one uh, USB-C hub that I plug in my laptops to uh, so I can use multiple monitors like whenever I'm working. So the idea is I'm going to plug that hub into the switch and it should be able to directly access the uh, server rack without even having to um, you know, go through the wireless access point or the router. I can just directly um, you know, connect it to the link layer and I can SSH in to my server because that's the idea. I'll just use my uh, desktop as normal, and then whenever I need to access the server, I will just SSH into it. Um, I'm still undecided whether I, I want to actually put a GUI on it or not, but um, as we go, I'm sure I'll, I'll come to a decision on that. Anyway, so that's that's the basic setup, um, and you know that's why I'm doing this weird, funky thing with the bridge. So we'll see how it works out. And just for uh, completeness, I'm going to go through and show you. So this, I actually ordered through eBay, and the company has saved my server. You can see this was the, the price, and that's what I actually paid uh, after taxes and everything. Um, had no issues with the actual order. It came within like four days, which uh, I, was, I was super happy with. Um, here's their actual website, um, and you can see they have a deal of the week where, you know, um, on R, R630 uh, for 395 
um, like 1.8 gigabyte or sorry 1.8 terabytes of storage, uh, 20 cores, um, two CPUs. So I mean you can you can find some good deals just depending on what you're looking for. So I mean especially if you're not tied to one particular model or one particular uh, vendor or maker, um, you can find some pretty great deals. Um, and then also I picked up the rails from here as well. The rails were 80 bucks and I just got some uh, extra storage, some SAS hard drives, uh, four terabytes. But I know you're thinking, Spencer, why are you getting hard drives uh, when you could be getting, you know, SSDs? And the reason is these are $273. <laughs> So the idea is eventually I will swap, uh, you know, as much storage out, out as I can for uh, solid state drives for the increase in speed. But for now, um, we'll just be working with the uh, these old slow hard drives here or HHDs. Um, okay, so here was the power strip I used. As you can see, it's pretty simple. The only real benefit here is it just ties into the rack. Um, but it was one of the cheaper options, has pretty good ratings on Amazon. Um, here's the switch. I just wanted a really simple um, basic switch and five ports is fine for me. Ratings are great on this, 112,000, so I'm pretty sure that's, that's going to work for me. Uh, this rack was highly rated and is adjustable and, um, you know, should, in theory, uh, you know, give me everything I need. And it's nice as it's 19 inches tall and it will fit on my desk. Or sorry, 23 inches, I think. Is, let's see, yeah, 23 inches tall, so it'll fit, fit under my under my desk. Um, and then the access point here, Wi-Fi 6, and it, it has the capability to act as a bridge. So um, also really good ratings here. And finally, just some general uh, CAT6 uh 10 gigabit per second uh, Ethernet cables um, to tie everything together. So, all right, guys, this is the first video. Um, hopefully, that gives you an idea of what we're trying to accomplish here or what I'm trying to accomplish here. And um, hopefully, this will be helpful. Uh, and as we go, I'm going to make uh, just a, a consecutive series of videos um, going through this process. The next video will be um, actually putting the rack together. Um, and after that, it'll be you know racking the server, uh, and then basically connecting all the hardware, and then setting the server up, and then tying like getting all the uh, network, setting the network up and the routing and everything so that it actually works, uh, and then setting up firewall and security and all those other things. So it'll be it'll be a fairly long series, but um, hopefully I know I'll learn a lot. Hopefully you guys will learn a lot, and um, hopefully we'll get a nice cheap. Um, industrial grade server out of all, all this. So anyway, guys, uh, thanks. Um, and if you enjoyed the content, please give me, or please consider giving me a like and a subscribe so I can continue to grow and produce better content for you guys. Um, and also again, if you really enjoy the content, you might even consider buying me a coffee, uh, for the link or from the link in the video description. Um, but if none of that's, uh, if he's able to you at least just give me some feedback in the comments, let me know how I'm doing. Uh, if anything's unclear, there's things I can improve on. But guys, thanks again, uh, and have a great rest of the day.